My overall impression is that they're outstanding. The students love them. They thoroughly enjoy the chance to be able to move around and to put their belongings underneath. Um, it's, really, it's really been a, a really positive change. The, the, chairs, uh, the chairs, the mobility of the chairs is fantastic, along with, and I realize this is a little thing, but having a, a place where the materials can go under the desk that moves with them as they move around the classroom is just fantastic because you're able to reconfigure the class very easily and very quickly. So it saves time as well as kind of new and modern. One of the things I love about the rooms is that they, they allow, they're so fluid. You can move so fluidly from one arrangement to another. So on a really good day, we're in a, several different setups throughout the hour. Um, I love the options that the classroom gave me. One of the questions you asked was, what do you like about the rooms? And I would sum it up in the flexibility. It's great. It is really good for group work because when you have students in, sitting in rows and fixed chairs and you say, okay, now everybody turn to two people and let's look at this problem. And they all just sit there and go, but in this sort of a room, and you say, get in groups of three, immediately they're just moving around because they <laughs> like to move around. That's cool. Uh, I use the classroom for a lot of group assignments. Um, so it's very easy to put people into different groups. Um, having kind of the chair and a movable desk for the faculty member, I can be placed in the middle of the groups, kind of working around like a wheel spoke, and I can move into different groups as I hear things that they're working on and I can help them in that regard. It also allows the groups to interact as well. So what we'll do sometimes is, as each group is working together, we'll move one member of, one team member of the group and rotate them to the other groups to share their ideas, the process they're going through solving the problems, and it's, it's a real very efficient way to work in teams, but also integrate the teams so they learn from each other. Um, I can PowerPoint from the front of the room if I need that, moving into small group arrangements uh, in all kinds of configurations. I can pull people into a large group discussion or put them to work on the boards um, on their own, solving problems, and then go back and look at that work with everyone, with everyone turning to see whatever, you know, is on every board. And I, I think the reason I like that, well, first of all, I see myself as a facilitator. That's my teaching role. Um, that's, or that's the role that I feel most comfortable in as a teacher. Um, and having all these options really challenges me. Um, as a teacher in ways that I think are really productive for my teaching. It makes me think really hard every hour about what my learning goals are for the hour, um, for every meeting, and, and what's the best way to use our time together. If you think about it, when students commit to your class, they commit to an hour that you get to plan for them. So you want to make, I want to make really good use of that time and space. And so these classrooms give me a space where I um, can do many things. So I have to think hard about what's the best way to, what's the best thing to do? What's the best configuration to support my learning goals? The um, specific way that I use the classrooms, obviously I do a lot of group work with them. Um, and I use the mix of the whiteboards and the um, flexible chairs to move them around into groups, to split them apart into really you know, paired groups and then grab them back together. We do a lot of work where they're having to move around, where it's easy for them to use the chairs to just shift from space to space. So that's been really nice. Well, for one, it doesn't take four minutes to have students work in groups. Get in the group. The teacher just says, okay, here are the names of the groups, get in the groups, and people are turning around, or they're moving their chairs, or they're getting up. It's less time. And for foreign language classes, we're very, very aware of the limitations we have in time, because what we want students to do is to engage, to, to use the language and not talk about the language all the time. 
uh, the mobility of the chairs where they can turn around, get up in groups, push the chairs away because they're going to do a skit or they're going to do various different kinds of things uh, that require pushing like concentric circles where one group is in the middle and there's an outer group and so they're asking each other opinions to kind of do a survey. Um, the flex, the mobility is super, super important. That's one thing. You want to talk about some more examples? Yeah, I was telling um, Stan earlier, um, I have a photo, I wish I had sent it to him, of a class I visited where the students were in all of these, as you can see, they're all of these whiteboards, and the teacher sent them to the whiteboards, and this is in the target language in Spanish, uh, and they had been studying adjectives, and so in order to apply, as I said, we, we try to use the language for a purpose. So she was describing a monster, and the students were, you know, listening and trying to draw what they heard. Um, that's, that's one example. Another one is when students are asked to get up and find, it's kind of a seek and find, find the individual who is the youngest person in this classroom, or the individual who, whose grandparents or parents you know, live, live the greatest distance from the school, uh, statewide or, you know, abroad. Um, so that's kind of a seek and find. Using the language for prob problem solving so that students actually listen to each other. So another one was, um, I've done this one also, where students, see how easy it is to demonstrate this? Students can be like this, right, or they can actually be like this where they're not, where they're facing each other, but they're seeing different things. You know, one student has access to the visuals on this board, the other one has access to the visuals on that board, and they're having to describe whatever it is on the board. It could be definitions of word. These are basic things. It sounds like, oh, that's not very university-like. Language classes, it doesn't sound like, Sounds like a lot of skill getting, but we also do a lot of culture and content, um, and that's where it really is even more beneficial because the students have a hard time just, if you ask them, well, what do you think? What do you think of this? Or why do you think this happened? Or why did that person get so upset in this scenario? They just won't say much. But if you have them discuss it with each other and then come up with, uh, okay, now what is it that you saw or you discussed or what surfaced in your talk, then they have been talking. They've been using the language. They have some of the language they need to be able to feel comfortable to express it now with the class. And so I think what the flex classrooms do um, is exactly that. It breaks down the barriers. It allows students to communicate more freely and more often. Especially the smart boards, I think, you know, they're actually easier to use than previous setups. So um, I think it's nice to be able to have, I know that different rooms have different numbers of smart boards. One of the things that's, um, that I heard from one teacher and that happened in a session that I was in where there's not just the whiteboard at the front but also there's whiteboards and smart boards on different parts of the room. And so and I think this is in HSS 207, which is a larger room. And we had a big meeting in there, again, a sort of training meeting for the teachers. And one of the things that was great was that when we wanted to break down into groups, we could actually organize around each of those boards. And that just made um, it possible to use those you know, for referring to the task at hand, you know, but also be still in your group and not having to kind of strain to see what was going on at the front. So that, that made the, I guess, the kind of small group feel just be even more effective. Um, and I think that um, 
so far, you know, everything that I hear from all the teachers is, of course, they just want in. You know, they want into those rooms, you know, because of those technological features, the smart boards and, um, you know, the whiteboards on the different, the different, um, you know, the different walls. That, you know, such a simple thing, but it makes a difference. It gets teachers moving around more, which is, I think, what the, what the idea was, so. And then the other thing that the students say about the classrooms is that they really like the enhanced technology that came with them, but they notice that most of their professors don't know what to do with it. So in my classroom, we use the um, projection and the smart board to some extent, but we, we actually rely a lot more on the whiteboards and their individual group work. So it's, a, it's a, an opportunity for me as well, but it also notes what we could do um, as, a, as an institution. The technology is great too. I mean, first of all, just having all the equipment embedded in and, and not hauling it from the department is a is is, is wonderful. Uh, but it also offers a lot of learning opportunities for our students. Uh, one is that we can easily share each other's work. So whether they're working individually or as teams, um, we can put up what each of the groups working on. What's nice is so much of the technology interconnects with the technologies that the students are bringing into the class. So a lot of times they'll send me their work to my iPad, I'll look at it, send it back, and sometimes there's something I really want to show to the class that they're working on, and then I can just transmit that over to the larger, I mean, to the screen, yeah, and we can all take a look at it. So it really allows kind of individual interaction between me and students, allows group interactions between the groups or groups and the faculty member, and then it allows individuals or groups to also show their work to everyone else in the class. So, and I think part of it is just the seamlessness of it. It's a very efficient system to use. Um, and I think it just enhances the learning environment.